All right. Um, I, I would like to share a song with you. And so before I, I get into the message of today, please listen to the song. And may you be blessed by the message. So I just wanted to to share that song because I think it it's, it's, it focuses a lot on what I wanted to share today. Um, uh, today we've been we'll be talking about warfare. Um, I think Jesus said that one of the signs of his coming will be wars and rumors of wars. I'm sure that you remember that. And and so today I want us to be looking at this idea of warfare. And and this is. This is not the this is not the regular warfare that is televised or that mainstream media talks about, like maybe Ukraine and then and, and then Russia. Um, even though even though this is probably the longest warfare that has ever taken place on the planet, and yet strangely it is rarely ever talked about. And 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 I guess even more strange is that those who are involved in this war, they don't know they're, that they're at war. And so they live in defeat when they should be conquerors. I'm, I'm going to ask us to, to um, oh, I'm going to be turning to this passage here in um, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, where Paul tells us clearly here that we are in a spiritual warfare. We're in a spiritual warfare, but not many people are familiar with this. 
and um, he also makes us know that our wrestling is against unseen spiritual forces, invisible spiritual forces. Actually, Paul calls them, he says that they are, he mentions them, uh, he says they are principalities and they are powers. He says they are the rulers of the darkness of this world. He said that it's spiritual wickedness in high places. So um, how do we engage in this kind of a war? Let's look at what he has to say here in um, in. In Corinthians, in in Second Corinthians, ten, correct. Second Corinthians, chapter ten, and let's look at, at a couple of verses here. In verses, let's let's go. Let's start in verse three. Second Corinthians, chapter ten, and let's start in verse three. Let's look at what he says here. He says, "For though we walk in the flesh." We do not war after the flesh. Verse 4, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Look at what he says next, casting down imaginations and everything that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Um, I, I love the... I love the translation that 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 um, that comes from the Good Word. Do I have that here? Let me let me double check that. All right. Yes, I want you to I want to share this this one with you, and this is from the Good Word. Here's what it says: Of course, we are human, but we don't fight like humans. Interesting. We are human, but we don't fight like humans. Then he goes on to say here the weapons of our, the weapons we use in our fight are not made by humans rather they are powerful weapons from god with them these powerful weapons we destroy people's defenses that is their argument and look at what he says next and all their intellectual arrogance that oppose the knowledge of god we take every thought captive so it is obedient to Christ. I love the, uh, the translation here given um, from the new word that we are, we are supernatural beings. We are not just human beings. And that is the reason why we don't fight like humans. We, we may appear, I want to put that word in, for even though we appear to be only humans, we are not just humans. Therefore, our fight is not necessarily that of humans do you understand what i'm saying and, and i mean this might be sounding strange to you but it is what the word of god says and i and i also believe that because we have not understood this as we ought then we live in defeat when we should be in victory every day and um, i'm going to prove that to you so um so since he says that our weapons are not carnal is our weapons are not fleshly our weapons are not physical what are these weapons because that and then he says these weapons where we are we, we use these weapons to pull down strongholds and all of that um that that is happening today so my question then is what are the strongholds what are the strongholds in your life today and this is a personal question to each person because you know what the strongholds are so um what are the strongholds in your life right now right now at this very moment what are the things in your life that are that are that are causing you not that are, that are that is holding you back from your full potential in the kingdom of God. What are these strongholds? What what are these what are these addictions? I mean, was it is it cigarette? What is it? Is it alcohol? What what are these? Is it pornography? Is it sex? Is it what is it? Loneliness? You tell me. What is this stronghold that is in your life? Is it obsession with money, or maybe the stronghold in your life is sickness? Maybe the stronghold in your life right now is pain. What are these strongholds in your life? Because Jesus said, look at what Jesus said. Jesus said in the book of Luke chapter 10, he said, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. And who is he talking to? He's talking to you and me. That once we come to understand who we are and what we have and what we're able to do, that no stronghold can hold us. In fact, he said that the weapons that we're given is... Um, will be powerful to the pulling down of stronghold and casting down. But we're going to be examining that and exploring this a little bit today um, within the, in the next um, 35 minutes or so. 
Um, so I want us to look at this, this weapon. What, what are these weapons that we have that, that the Word of God says? Paul says that they are mighty through God. What are they? Now, if you don't know, isn't this true? If you don't know the weapons, we will never use them. Is that true? If you don't know that you have weapons, will you ever even use it? No. And you'll be constantly defeated because all we talk about is the weapon. I, 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 I mean, when you read the Bible, the Bible says we have weapons. And if you can only talk about the weapons, but you don't know the weapons, you're not able to use the weapon. So my question then is, what are these weapons? The truth is I've asked this question, this question of many, many Christians before, and um, some of them are even alarmed ready to say, what? You mean Christians have weapons? I've never heard of that, right? And probably you're, you're uh, among the same kind of um, people who don't, I've never heard that Christians have weapons, but the Bible says that we do have weapons that we use to fight. And so what is this fight and what is this weapon? Now, if, if you were, if you're in this category that you don't know uh, or the weapons that we have and you don't know what they are, don't, don't feel that, don't be in despair. And don't don't feel too bad because that's what the, the that's what the series is about. It's about equipping the saints about the reality that we have in Christ Jesus. So um, as you ponder this question, as you ponder this question about our weapons, I'm going to give you a hint. Okay, are you ready for it? So it's not a riddle. It's not a riddle that I'm asking. I'm asking you simply just to think. What are the weapons? And as you as you ponder, as you think, just now in your mind, as you stop for a moment and think, what are the weapons that we've been given? In this fight now remember it's not physical remember it's not fleshly remember so it's nothing that you can think of that you can that is that is tangible per se okay so what 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 are the thoughts that are in your mind or is it that your mind is blank hmm, never heard of that before well let, let's think and i'm going to give you a hint okay our weapons here's the hint our weapons are the same weapons Jesus used when he was here on earth. So that's the end. Our weapons are the very same weapons that Jesus used when he was here on earth. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not talking about Jesus having a plotted cord where, where, where he drove out the, 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 um, the people from the temple and, and overturned the money changers table and all of that. I'm not talking about the plotted piece of cord. Okay, that that was <laughs> that was um, just an incident showing the displeasure that he had and in seeing what was happening. But there was some, there is something, there is something that supersedes everything else. Do you know what that is? What is that weapon that Jesus used? What is that weapon that 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 caused him to 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 be the exemplary figure that we talk about today? That the the the, the fact that this 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 being Jesus Christ was the first, he was a protege of the um or the prototype, the prototype of the new human race. He was the first of the new human race. He was the first divine human being that came to this planet. And, and since him, he has made everybody in his body, every person that became a part of him, another divine human being. Therefore, therefore, if he is the first, he is the prototype, then all that comes after him should be as he is, right? So. What was that weapon? Uh, I'm not sure what thoughts are in your mind, but I'm, I'm going to give you um, what that weapon is, and it might surprise you, or you might say, the same thing I was thinking about, that weapon that Jesus used, and that Jesus had, and that he has given to all of us, is words. Amazing. You never thought of that before. But look at this. Words. Words that releases authority. Words that releases commands. Words that releases um, declaration. Words that, that, that when it's released, causes things to happen. And I want you to think about, about that because um, you'll see it more clearly as we examine. Look, look just think for a moment. When, when Jesus dealt with, with the devil in the wilderness, how did he fight that spiritual war? What did he do? Okay, so he spoke, didn't he? All right, how did he deal with the demon-possessed um, people? How did Jesus deal with the demon-possessed people? How did Jesus deal with the dead? How did Jesus deal with the lepers? Oh, I mean, are you getting the picture? Yes, 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 that is the point I wanted to get. It was by his words. 
And so the combination of his heart, the combination of his thought, his will, his desire, all flowed through his mouth. And, and, and so, you know, the, the word of God tells us, Paul tells us in, 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 in Romans 10, how, the, how faith comes about, right? It talks about faith, but if you believe it in your heart and confess it with your mouth, he says, this is what real faith is. We have got the, the opposite of it. We have got the, 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 um, the, the falsified version, which is that we, are, we say things that we don't believe. And, and you know what, we call that hypocrisy, right? And Jesus said, this people, quoting Isaiah, he says, this people draw it down to me with their lips, but their hearts are far. But the word of God tells us that when, when I can say what is in my heart, that, that gives a difference. And so when Jesus spoke, he knew what he, who he was. He knew what he had. So when he spoke, he released what was in him. You understand what I'm saying? So what's an example? An example was Peter and John going to the gate um, going to prayer. They're, they're going to prayer. They're at the gate, beautiful. And here was a man begging for arms. He's asking for something. He's asking for money. Okay. And what Peter and John looked at him and said, look, look at us. We don't have money. But what we have, we will give you. Let me ask you something. Did they know something that you don't know? Do you know that Peter and John is a part of the same human race that you and I are a part of? That they are, they are divine human beings, just like you and I are divine beings? How is it then that Peter and John knew more about who they were than we do? Well, you'll say, but Brother Awa, they were with Jesus. They were there. Okay, but then they gave us their story. They told us how it was. How it was. John told us what, what, we, what, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have handled with our hands, of the word of God, we're going to give you. John tells us what we have. And he tells us, truly, our fellowship is with the Father and his Son. Is that what he said? Yes. So if, we, if, if he knew and told us, why are we saying that we're ignorant of it? No, we're not ignorant of it. We know, but we probably have not chosen to believe that reality. But with this weapon that Jesus, Jesus knew it, he could release it because he knew who was in him. And in knowing who was in him, he could pull down strongholds and he could, he could break anything asunder because he never had to use his hand. He spoke to the kingdom of darkness and it trembled and obeyed him. He simply walked by a command, come out of him, and it came out. Why is it then that we don't do the same things? I don't know. Uh, maybe Adventism scar? I, I don't know. I know most people from my background um, and heritage are not so, so learned in, 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 in boldness and confession. They, 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 don't, they, don't, um, they don't know how to stand and how to shout aloud and how to defy the devil's wiles. And, and, and somehow, um, if they hear that happen, if they hear somebody like Brother Howard, uh, you know, begin to really say something, or maybe Sister Marcia, then immediately we are classified as Pentecostals. Isn't that true? Because in our background, we, we, we are in the, we, we are more like, they're calm, quiet, and, and, and so on, right? But we don't know how to stand. I, I, I've ever wondered what was Jesus' demeanor? What was his demeanor like? We have a picture in our mind, don't we all? We, 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 I was listening to some um, National Geographic thing, I think it was some, they were talking about the book of Thomas. And they said in the book of Thomas, Jesus was portrayed as a different person. I don't know, maybe somebody like me was always jovial and, and, and so on, right? But and maybe you said, no, 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 no. I will not accept Thomas's version of Jesus. Because in your mind, you're thinking, no, he, he was not, he was more stoic. Uh, he was more like a German. <laughs> I don't know. Brother Oliver would probably um, be able to, to tell me what his thoughts are. But he was maybe more, more, more somber and serious. And so on. I don't know what 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 your thoughts are of, of Jesus, but I, I do know that children um, enjoy his presence and his company. And um, I'm not sure. Maybe maybe you're saying Jamaican children are different, but I, if if you're of a certain personality, it will not be welcoming to children at all. But um, so I don't know. But I do know that he is the Son of God. That his demonstration of what he was and is. Is also for us because it what whoever and whatever he was, he has given us to be. Whatever he is, we are. Isn't that what John says? That um, as he is, so are we in this world. Is that the truth? 
So if it is the truth, then we ought to be in the same place as he is. We ought to be understanding like he understood. We ought to, we ought to be standing in faith like he stood in faith. Did Jesus have faith? Of course he had faith. He believed in his father and he lived a life that was pleasing to his father. Do you know why? Because he was conscious of this reality that God was with him, that God was in him, that God was speaking through him, and that God was working through him. Do we believe that? Do we believe that God is, is doing all of this um, um, through us? Um, I was thinking, uh, I was, I mean, I'm, I, I'm, I'm very, I listen to a lot of people um, and I've learned this. I've, I've been to him, um, taught me differently that I must not listen to people. I must not read people's material. Um, and so they kind of kept, kept me kind of focused, like, like boxed in. And, um, and even today, you see that you, you hand somebody a book and the first thing they do, they flip it over to say, where is this from? Who, who wrote, where, where, is, where did this come from? Because they have a mindset as to what they will read or what they will not read, who they will listen to or who they will not listen to. It's almost like the same mindset of Jehovah's Witnesses. But I, 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 I listen far and wide. I like to listen to people. I like to, I like to hear people out because that's the only way you, you, you learn. Just by listening. Um, I remember it was it, um, the wise man Solomon talking about um, the sacrifice of fools. Have you read that one before? I think it's, it's, it's Ecclesiastes 5. But I think um, if you read that properly and, and, and understandingly, you'll understand that the sacrifice of fools, you were talking about when you go into the house of God, like you said, you have to keep your mouth shut and don't offer the sacrifice of fools. Like just keep talking, keep talking. Just stop sometimes and listen. And when you're able to listen, in the same thing with the word of God. Listen to the word of God. I recognize that there is something of power when you are able to confess and, and, and to declare and to proclaim certain things. I, 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 I have seen that in my own life. I've seen that in my own life in, 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 in some strongholds that probably, um, you know, would, would, would want to take me over. And it's by declaring and even speaking out loud. Um, like to speak, just just to allow your your your, voice. and it does something for my faith. I mean, I realize that that does something for my faith as well. But if if you understand what um in fact yesterday, something of interest. Yesterday I was in the parking lot, and um, and while I was in the parking lot, I there was some guys walking around selling, you know, selling selling different things. So this was I think it was selling some CDs, some some compact discs, some audio CDs. So it, anyway, he was walking around. And selling, so soliciting um, sales for his for his goods, and so he came to this kind of, kind of a little like a minivan and asked if anybody wanted CDs, and they and they and somebody answered and spoke to him and said, "But can we pray for you?" And and strange, they said yes. By the time they said yes, I mean like five or six people were out of the vehicle instantly, and everybody laid their hands on him and they started a prayer right in the parking lot. I mean it was loud, and that's that's what kind of caught my attention, and and I, and I and I thought. Interesting. They were just praying for him and praying over him and praying that the spirit of the Lord would, would come and and, and 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 you know and and have him understand his need for God and all of this and then they were just praying for him and I found that 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 uh, that was interesting but I mean I knew from that that you could tell that those people were not Adventists. Adventist has a different kind of um, background. You know you don't this this is not something that you do. Um, my, my mother came from. My mother came from a mixed background. My mother had more Jehovah's Witnesses in her background. She came from the Jehovah's Witnesses, and um, and she became an Adventist. But here's a strange mix that that um, in in our church, when when you hear somebody say Hallelujah, everybody knew it was my mother. She was the only person that in in my church that would would shout some Hallelujah and some praise the Lord, and um, and actually you see her body move like in, like she said. Amen, or something like that. And I remember as a little boy, I would say, I would say, I would say to her, I would go close to her, and I said, "Mama, Mama, what, what happened? What happened to you?" And she said, "Oh, my son, oh, my son, I tell you, one day you'll understand." And she was right, because I eventually understood that. There are times when, when, when you're, you're, you're somewhere where you're even speaking and the, and the Spirit of God just reaches you and touches you in a way that, that, that causes reaction, right? And, and I mean, you say that's Pentecostalism, I don't know. You, whatever, but you must know your experience, why somebody would, 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 would say something like that. It's something that they feel on the inside. 
and um, I guess everybody knew her um, to be that 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 way. Um, I may have said this to you, but a, a couple of weeks back, I, I was watching uh, 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 an uh, interview with an Adventist lady and who said she got a vision or a dream or whatever it was. And so anyway, she came to church and when she was there and church, she asked, um, I'd like to say something. And then she started telling the people like what she heard in the vision and so on. And, and she said that the deacons came and took her up and took her out into, for, into the foyer, I think. And um, when, and she said before long, there were, there were a group of people there. And she said the pastor was there and the pastor was mentioning to her husband, you need to take her to the hospital, to take her to see a doctor because maybe she's something has gone wrong with her. And she said, nothing is wrong with me. I'm telling you what I heard from the Lord in vision, <laughs> whatever. And she said, do you know what happened too? These people came and they started praying for her because something was different. Something was strange and something was differently strange and wrong in their com in, in their in their understanding and so they thought this was not normal and and so and i understand i understand that maybe even in a forum like this that that, that most people they don't know um anything about the reality of, of of speaking certain things into existence now my my wife is is a lot different from me um my wife i i, I would i would I, I normally would say to her that she's she 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 is very pessimistic Right. She says she 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 protests. She says, no, that's not true. But you know what she would do? She'd normally say, like, we'll say the negatives. Um, and she said, Well, nobody thinks about that. And I said, But why do you say the negative? You know, you why why speak the negative? And so sometimes she speaks the negative, and I will say, Okay, speak it into existence. Because I want you to understand that when you speak the negative, you're actually speaking it into existence. Now, some people, most people might say that is foolishness. But you think about it and you recognize that when you're in a situation, when you're in, when, 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 when the stronghold seems to have a hold of you and you can't break, how do you break? How do you break? You ask God to break it and he doesn't break it and we are offended with God. We say, God, do this. Oh God, but I'm asking you and God, you don't. Why doesn't God do? Because God has already given us the reality that we have. God is inside of us and is empowering us but we don't believe it. We hear it, we read it, but we don't believe it. And because we don't believe it, we don't proclaim it. We don't speak over our strongholds. In fact, I've said this maybe a couple of weeks ago, that the truth is, keep your focus on Christ. Look at Jesus. How did Jesus live? Look at Jesus. How did he deal with these people who had strongholds over them? Look at him. Did Jesus ask God to release the stronghold? No. But why do we ask God to release the stronghold? See, I'm telling you, there's a break. There's a break in understanding. Because if we're looking at Christ, if Christ is our example, not that we do as he do, but that we be as he is. If he's our example in this way, how can you be like Christ? How can you even be Christ and you behave differently from Christ? Do you see my point? I, I hope you're seeing my point. Because here, here's the issue. It says Jesus was filled with, I heard Brother David mention that even, even and, and recently, just, just, just before we started here. Um, he said that Jesus was filled with all the fullness of God. That's what the Word of God says. The Word of God says that God did not give the Spirit unto Jesus by measure. Okay? Now, but we think, if you're honest and you ask yourself, and, I, and I, I, if I could honestly just ask you, everybody, to unmute your mic and tell me the truth. None of you believe that you are full with, filled with all the fullness of God. That's the truth. We were not cultured in this way. We were, not, we were not taught in this way. In fact, we were taught to be careful that we don't try to equalize ourselves with Christ. You be careful because you're not like him. He is holier than you. He is, and you, you put Christ on a pedestal and you put yourself all the way down. And we say that is being humble. How often we try to do like Paul and we say that we are the chiefest of sinners. Have you ever tried it? I have. Just try to be in alignment with others who say we're the chief of sinners. It's not true. The Bible did not say this of you. Are you the chief of sinners? Are you? I am not the chief of sinners. I have been bought with a price. I have been redeemed. I have been justified. I have been sanctified. That is who I am. Now, do I live in that reality? Very rarely. Why? 
is it because of our maybe our our culture maybe our our customs i don't know why don't we live in that reality when when you look at the word of christ when you look at how christ lived he lived in a reality where he knew where he knew who he was he knew he was without sin he knew all of this now let me ask you are you not where christ is in terms of your state are you not in christ if you are in christ paul says um i am crucified with christ so i'm dead so i live but it's not me that is living it's christ that's living in me now is that is that what a uh, uh, a kind of um, a formula christ is giving and paul is giving is trying to exegete and exegete certain things or is it the truth is it the truth that you're dead is it the truth that i'm dead with christ is it the truth that he lives and it's not me that lives is that the truth now, if we believe it to be the truth, we will live it and proclaim it without any form or thought of um, equality. Because we recognize what God has done for us in Christ, that he has elevated us to that level and to that place. And so for that reason, I recognize we pray very different. Then Jesus prayed. I said that to you the last time, didn't I? Look, you take the, the Bible, take up the Bible, take the Bible in your hand and begin to look at the life of Christ. Look at how Christ lived and just look at how Christ prayed. And you'll see that we don't pray like Christ. We don't say the things that Christ say because we believe differently from Christ. And so our experience and the result is far different from what Christ got. And then we complain. And then we say, it is God's fault. And when we say, maybe God is not ready. And we say, God, when God ready? When God is ready, we're going to see things like we've never seen before. Is that really true? Is God going to do something different than he's doing now? What has he done? He has saved us in Christ. He has redeemed us in Christ. He has, he has elevated us in Christ. He has given us everything that he, was, he has given Christ. And now we say it is him waiting to do what? Give us more than we have? Paul says we have been blessed with all spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Paul says that we sit in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. If that is the truth, why is it that we, we are behaving differently from Christ? It is what we are believing. See, I'm telling you that what affects your heart affects your mouth. And if you're not being able to believe the truth in your heart, how can you confess it? How can you express it? How can you say the thing? How can you, how can you stand and look and speak? to a situation knowing that what you say it will happen how do how, how can you do that if you're not believing it in your heart so when you look at christ christ never does what we do when somebody comes and is sick we christ never says um, oh, oh father i know that you are love i know you i know you because i have lived with you for eternity I know that it is your will to heal this person. I know. So will you not at this moment, right now, heal this person for me? And yet that is what we do. We, we, we try to say, we try to um, soothe our hearts with saying these, these, these lovely things. And we sing, we know, Father, that you love us. We know all of this. And we know what you want to do. And we know. And now I'm asking you, Lord, just do this for us. Christ never prayed that way. No. Who was it? Who, who did they bring to Christ? Okay, so they brought a demon possessed person. And what did Jesus say? Come out of him and enter no more into him. Okay, and what happened? The demon left and came back no more. So they brought unto Jesus a sick person. What did Jesus say? Be healed. And what happened? They were healed. What about the leper? I will be healed. Go show yourself to the priest right i'm simply saying to you look when the blind came to him and said what do you want jesus said, what do you want me to do he said that we may receive our sight he said be healed eyes open and it was open so i'm simply saying when you look at this you understand that there is something wrong with our approach jesus knew his weapon where was his weapon his weapon was in his heart came through his mouth is he knew that all of this could flow through him so it was in his hand and he was able to touch but here's the difference look at these hands are they normal hands so you may think are these hands normal okay so you may think these are normal hands but they are not these hands have the ability to touch and the the, the reality of that is, of that which is in me is able to be transferred to the person but guess what 
We rarely ever do that. We don't use our hands. We don't. We don't put our hands on our children. We don't speak of our children. We don't bless. We don't. We don't do it. When we 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 rarely touch. We will we will clasp our hands and we will be in 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 um in in the attitude of prayer. We put our hands behind us. We rarely ever touch somebody. And yet we say, "Is God in us? Is Christ in us? Do you believe it?" Now, if you believe it, then begin to release what is in you. Begin to release those words that are, that are in you that, that, and, and begin to use those words to enlarge the kingdom of God and to depopulate hell because it is the same Jesus Christ who is in us. Hallelujah. It is the same Jesus Christ. Now, um, I, you know, I, in, in the past, I've done things that, that you know, I, I realized that, um, for example, um when we when when I went to raise the dead on more than one occasion something that 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 that, that, that the Lord brought to my mind is uh, for example when we went to Kingston I think I was I was led of the Lord I was impressed and all the signs showed that this was this, this was the will of God okay in fact put signs aside isn't it the will of God that the that the reality that is in you um be flowed out that others will see isn't that the truth so it, it wasn't it the will of god that um at a funeral service um that woman who had the one son in in, in name that jesus would stop them and just take the son off is that the will of god so i'm looking at this and i realized that i went to the place we i i said what was in my heart we everything whatever happened i spoke nothing happened and Something that came to my mind was this. I should not have left that place. What are you saying? What are you going to do? You're going to stay there? How long are you going to stay there? For how long are you going to wait? How many days are you going to? I mean, it doesn't matter. I don't argue with you. I'm dealing with what is inside of me. And if I know that what is inside of me is the truth, why do I stop? Why do I stop? If what is inside of me is the truth, if it is, if it is the reality, why do I stop? You know, in stopping, we don't see healing because we stop and we feel that we should pray and, and as we pray or we speak if we speak. And if nothing happens, what do you do? Well, you wait, because I recognize if you have spoken the word, if you have released the word, if you have released healing, then that is taking place first in the spiritual. Something happened in the spiritual. And I look, I'm telling you, I understand this more now because I've been I've been in many prayer sessions i've been in many different situations and i can tell you there are things that happen and you don't see it but it has happened but you just wait for it to be um to, to be manifested in the spiritual in the physical because once you declare something is that the word of god is that the reality that comes out of you or are you trying to see if it works so you say okay be healed um do you feel any better that doesn't matter. How does feeling come inside of this? Is feeling and 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 um, equivalent to healing? No. If I speak a word, if Jesus speaks a word, Jesus said to the leper that you are healed. Was the leper healed? He said, "Go show yourself to the priest." Did he see himself clean before he went to the priest, or was it while he was going to the priest that that happened? Jesus said to the tree, "No man shall eat fruit of you from from henceforth forever." Did something happen to the tree? Of course it did. Could you see it that moment? No. But 24 hours later, the tree was dried up from the roots. I'm just saying to you, in the perspective is this reality of the, the weapons that we've been given. I want you to understand the weapon is here. The weapon is in your mouth. The weapon is what you declare. What you declare, what you pronounce, because that is where the truth lies. What comes out of you. Begin to say it. If you, if you believe it, you say it. If you don't believe it, say it until you believe it. And then you will see it come to pass. Begin to, because Paul says that this weapon that we have is, going, is so mighty that it will be, begin to pull down strongholds and, and, um, and cast down imagination. In fact, I, that what, what the good word says is that these arguments, these philosophical arguments that... Um, that we that we you hear heard it so often those are the things that we declare and proclaim against now here's something that um i want what are the arguments that the enemies um the enemy is trying to to throw in your in in your ear what are the arguments that he's using to 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 um 
to defeat you? What are the arguments that he's using? What are, the, what are, are those things that the enemy is saying that you are accepting in your heart and destroying your entire life? What are these arguments? That's what I want you to think about because what are the intellectual intellectuals telling you about your, your reality in Christ? Because if, if you are not casting those words down, then guess what will happen? You're going to believe them. And if you believe them, do you know what will happen? You're going to live in defeat for the rest of your life. Um, in my last three minutes, let me let me quickly show you. I'm going to show you a scenario that I'm talking about. Let's look at this book of John. John chapter 7. Yes, John chapter 7 tells us about um, the elders sending out the Pharisees on, and the... Um, let me get down to verse... These elders sent out a group of people to, to capture Christ and to, and to bring him to, the, to, um, to them. If you're familiar with it, um, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Let's, let's look at what, what was said here in, in um, verses 40, uh, 45. Um, just a couple of verses. When the temple guards returned, the chief priests and Pharisees asked them, oh, the temple guards was that they sent out, why didn't you bring Jesus? And I want you to see what the temple guard said. The temple guard said, no man ever spoken like this man. All right, so they sent the temple guards to catch him by his words or whatever they sent him to say them to do. And they came back and they said, no man ever spoken like this man. And I want to see, I want you to see what this, the, the, these Pharisees tried to do. The Pharisees asked the temple guards, have you been deceived too? So what's the point? Everybody who listens to Christ is deceived. Everybody who obeys what Christ says is deceived. And look at what they said. Have you been deceived too? And look at what they said next. Has any ruler or any Pharisee believed in him? I hope you're, I hope you're getting the understanding. Because what they were doing, they were saying to you, look, look at us. Why don't we believe in him? And in fact, they went on to say something else that um, um, he said that those who, okay, sorry, sorry about that. My timer, which means my 45 minutes is up. Anyway, but, but they said um, that that these, these people who don't know the law um, is cursed. This crowd, verse 14, yes, this crowd is cursed because it doesn't know Moses teaching see you see the point I'm saying to you that most times we are we are we are um, these are the strongholds that comes to us these are the arguments that people try people try to use to to call you down and to bring you down to their level what's their level their level is, is simply intellectual their level is simply just doctrines and arguments and, and words that's their level their level is not the reality that is in Christ Jesus how do we then put ourselves to that level? Because of culture. Because of, you know what we looked at the last time? Jesus said that one of the greatest entrance to faith is that of people's opinion. How can you believe, he says in John 5, 44, who, um, who accepts honor one from another and, and, and receives not the honor that cometh from God only? So this is something I want you to consider. That there are, I mean, I'm going to expand on this, in, in fact, um, next week. Next week, next week, um, I, I want us to. We're going to categorize these these um, these these weapons because I believe the gifts of the spirit. I believe the what Paul says that um, that Christ has set some in the church, the establishment that Christ set up in the church, the fivefold ministry of Ephesians four, and and also the armor of God in Ephesians five. All of these things are showing us the weapons that we have in this warfare and why we should be conquerors and more than conquerors in this warfare because Christ has already given us everything. And it's time that the church of God awakes to its reality. It's time the church of God recognizes who we have been made to be in Christ Jesus and begin to stand, regardless of what the intellectuals tell you, regardless of what somebody has come to tell you. But because you know that you have heard from Christ, because you know what is going on inside of you, because you know what you're feeling, it might not necessarily be to shout hallelujah. No, but it will be that you know your authority and nothing 
can stand against you anymore. Nothing shall be impossible unto you. Nothing shall by any means hurt you. No weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. You begin to hold the promises of God and know this is the reality because I believe this is what will bring the latter rain. When the people of God begin to recognize what they have had, what they've been given, that's far different from anything that we have seen or heard or, or, or seen demonstrated, then they will take a stand for God and will say, I believe you, Lord Jesus, and I will take a stand for you. I just want to make an appeal to those who have not um, yet given their lives to Christ. That you're here on this platform and that you are, you know, you, 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 you like associating with the people of God, but that you yourself have not been at that place of surrender where you let it all go and give yourself over to him and you give yourself away for him to use you for his glory. I'd like to just make an appeal for you, to you um, at this moment that you will consider making that decision now at this moment. And so if you are one of those um, folks who would like to, to give your life to him and to consecrate yourself to him, then I'll ask that you just bow and pray with me. Father, thank you so much. Thank you for the gift of Jesus Christ. Thank you for the historical facts, the evidences that we have, we, have, we, re we have received from the word of God, that we have been made to be like Christ. We have been made to be Christ because we are in him and he's in us and that we are of his body, so we are in him. I just pray for those on this platform right now, those who are, are within the hearing of my voice, who wants to be dedicated to you, to surrender to you, to give themselves over to you completely. I just pray that right now, at this moment, your spirit will just fill their hearts. I just speak to them right now. I just speak, I just speak conviction over them at this moment. Receive the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you so much, Father. Continue to be the Father you are. Continue to show us who we are. And give us that gift of faith that we'll begin to live and reign as royalty, as divine human beings like Jesus is. We bless you and honor you and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Thank you so much for your time and your company today, brothers and sisters. We really appreciate it. Amen. Blessing, Sister Marcy. And a blessing to the to the to the church in your home there in, in Costa Rica uh, as well. All right. Um any quick questions or comments? Brother Wayne? Yes, Brother o, can, I, can I ask a question and make a comment as well? Um thank sure. you so much for the presentation. Sure. Um I was just thinking here, the power of words, you know. Um I I've started out a, a few months back, I, you know, reading through Ephesians and there I've, I wrote down and I and I began to say read it every morning after I have my prayer devotion I'll read these these affirmation as you would say or who I am in Christ I begin to affirm who I am in Christ based on what I've read in Ephesians I wrote down some pointers um, of who I am and I and I read them and I whether I feel this way or not. I read it and I'm believing it. And the other day I was listening to Sister Diane's um, YouTube and she mentioned something about affirming who we are in Christ you know, from a different angle. But she read some, she read it, I think um, she can remind us. And I thought this is, a, you know, we need to begin to accept who we are, even though what we're seeing before us, our reality might not be that way, but we are accepting because the word of God said it. And this is who we are. And um, until we begin to affirm it and believe it, then we will not step into that reality. We will still be be, be afraid of um, holding on to who God says we are. But my question is, what is the difference with what we are reading here in the scriptures um, as compared to the positive affirmation that we have so many of these words, and I have them, some of them are my status as well where we, we have these positive affirmations and these motivational words. What is the difference with that approach as compared to the approach that we have in the scriptures? Because it's words, and, and, and I know the power of words. 
but we have the positive affirmation you are great and you are rich and you are all of these things that the these motivational speakers say as compared to what the scripture claims us to be what is the difference where is the where do we draw the line because i mean when you listen to some of these speakers you mentioned Joel austin and a lot of times when you i don't listen i don't listen to him a great deal at all <coughs> but a lot of times when they speak you the church is full because it's a feel-good movement and they affirm a certain thing but where do we draw the line where the scripture is concerned i don't know if you get my question properly right i i, I think i do um but I, I, I don't, don't... Yeah, just, just a moment there sister anita I know, I know. With, with regards to um, Sister Lauren's question, I would say, oh. um, is it Hebrews, Hebrews 12 and verse 4? Somewhere there. Mm. The word of God is powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. These most right. motivational speakers, their word has no power. And, and their words, you know, it, it, it's, it's just, they just speak it and it's, it's just punishing thing here. But the word of mm. God stands strong. And fast forever and forever. The word of God is spiritual. It knows what is going on in our heart, in our marrow, in our bone, in our mind, in every part of us. So Agreed. this is this is the comparison. The word of God is powerful and it is sharper than any two edged sword. Thank you. And sorry to interrupt. That's all right. That's all right. Um okay, so so yeah, that's just Anita says the, the, the word of God is powerful, but we, we hear that, but for you to for you to um, to confirm that this is so, there must be a demonstration of the power of the word. So it is not as I said, sister sister um, sister Lorraine. The, the, what I see is all these affirmations are good, but sometimes sometimes we think that by affirming these things, by saying, "Oh God, you're so awesome," and, and so on, what we are trying to do, we are bribing God, like we are we are trying to 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 to, to, to nice him up, you know, to sweet him up. For him to do for us what we're wanting to do when the reality is he has already done it yet he, he has already given you all power yet look jesus said all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth he didn't just stop there and he says and lo i am with you which really is in you until the end of the age so if you all power is 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 in us i'm, I'm getting a little chitch in the background. Anyway, if all power is in us and, and that reality is in us, then we should see the reality because it's not what we say so much. I, I, I keep saying this, even in our prayers, it's not what we pray, it's not what we say, is what we are believing in our heart. And sometimes, even if you are believing the right thing, sometimes you don't even have to utter a word. You know what I mean? Sometimes in just laying on of a, of a hand in, in something, um, you can actually see something happen that... Uh, that um, Brother David, you want to just mute for me? I'm not sure if I'm the only person getting a, 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 a thingy here. Thanks. You have to unmute. You have to unmute. Now you're muted. How are you, Jesus? <laughs> okay, yeah, thanks. So, so, um, so it's, um, it is, it is, it is. It is not what we are saying so much as it what we are believing. I think that's what you know, Jesus wants us to understand, what Paul wants us to understand. It is what we are believing in our heart. Because we can say anything. We can say we can say the truth. We read the scriptures. We say the truth, but it's, it doesn't have the effect. You don't see the effect. And it, I, I believe the only reason is what we are saying is not in, in unison with what we are believing. Once we can believe it and say what we are believing, Paul says, this is the reality of faith. You will see answers. You will see certain things happen. Um, and just like that. And you're saying, how did that happen? It's because you're finally believing what you're actually saying. So that, that is kind of um, my, I'm not sure if that's even an answer um, for you or it kind of helps you along the line, Sister, sister um, Lorraine. But that's kind of how it, I see it. It does a bit. It does a bit. Yeah, it does a bit. And thanks, Sister Anita, as well. And I'm just thinking, which one comes first? Do I say it and then believe it, or do I believe it and, it's, and then I say it? You know. Which, All right. So I'll use Jerwes. I'll use I will speak to Paul as um, um advice to John. John Wesley. John says that um he's not believing, and, and Peter Paul says, um, keep preaching faith until you have faith, and then after you have faith, you'll preach faith because you have faith. So uh, I, I I believe that we should we should 
the, the exercise of the of, of your authority begins with you first exercising if you don't begin to exercise um then maybe that that reality will never happen you're saying well i won't do it until i know that how would you know that you have it is by releasing what is inside of you um that i see that to be the beginning the start you know yeah all right thank you sister lorraine um are there any sister Leanne, go ahead I just have a short testimony about prayer. I am, sure. I am reminding myself constantly how to pray for others and um, and how to speak things over them, even when they're not with me. And most of you know, I have a daughter who's been on hard drugs for years and um, 30 something years. And she, uh, gotten so bad that it's hard to even communicate with her and I hadn't heard from her for a number of weeks and I was praying for her and as I was asking God to move on her heart I just uh, remembered that I need to speak to her and so I began speaking to her and um, commanding her to um, to break free from the chains that Satan has on her. And I started talking to her as if she was sitting across from me, just telling her how much I loved her. And I started to weep. And I, um, and I, after I was done praying, I was sitting there for about 10 minutes and she started texting me, and I didn't even know her phone number anymore. She started texting me and telling me she had just recently been in jail, and she was telling me how much she appreciated my unconditional love for her and how all of the women where she was locked up were so jealous when she told them about how I just I always loved her and I always believed in her that she will you know be free and um it was so amazing we had a long conversation and and it was like instantly like my words touched her and she and she was moved and so it's it's amazing how um god shows us when we start to do what he has taught us to do, you know, Amen. So it's a Amen. very encouraging. Amen. 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 You keep, you, Amen. You keep going, you keep, uh, you keep um, praying for his sister, uh, sister Leanne, and um, begin to declare certain things over us. You speak what you want to see happen. You just begin to declare it. You right in your room, wherever you are, you just begin to say it. You take a hold of your daughter. I mean, just like Sister Marcia, um, you know, she covers her daughter. She she speaks certain things. She knows she will come home. Things like this. This is what you're speaking into existence because you have this creative energy inside of you, and it is the Word of God. It is God Himself, and that is flowing out um, through you. Uh, you know, I have a testimony. I, well, I heard a testimony that has really blessed me, um, and um, I'm, 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 I'm supposed to be following up on this. But I was talking to Brother Joel, um, um, Brother Joel Calvin. Not sure that he's online now. He's probably gone off to his, um, to his, his session. But anyway, we we're talking about my wife and I. We were discussing um, Brother Joel's sister Janice and her husband, who has been sick for a long time. They came a couple of years back um, to be baptized here in Jamaica. Um, Donald, he has a he has a, um, some disease called ALS where he's, he's losing the, the the muscles and all of that in his body. But anyway, we were discussing this how that the only reason why Brother Donald is alive is because of his wife Janice. And so we were um, I was talking to Brother Joel and I mentioned it and he, he was saying some things to me that I mean it was like amazing. I remember I spoke to Janice when they had him on life support. And they decided that they were going they were going to have to take him off of this, but they were saying he did, they're not sure that he's going to live. He was so weak and all of that. And um, and Janice went. I mean, this 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 girl, she's full of faith. I mean, she said, "You take him off, he will live." And Janet, um, Donald is alive today. But I mean, I'm telling you, I'm telling you something, brother. Brother Joel told me a story that Janice went 
to where he's staying now. Um, and I think he, do, he doesn't even speak anymore. I think he's using some app or something to use his eyes to communicate, right? But um, Janice went to anoint him and she went in the room where he was to anoint him. And when she went and, and spoke over him, something amazing happened. Every one of those machines started, lights started flashing, buzzers and alarms started going off in the room. And Janice ran out in, and, and called for the nurse and these folks to come and to see what is going on. And when they came in the room, everything was normal. And they started looking at her and said, um, ma'am, or these things are connected to our front desk. So if something happened, we would have seen or heard something. But Janice was there, she saw it. She knew exactly what happened. And, but these people didn't see it. So I think there is a miracle in the making. I think Brother Joel says that he's, he's encouraging her to go back, to go back and to, to, to do what she did. And once these things start happening, don't worry about that. This is the power of God at work. And just and watch and see what happens. I mean, I'm, I'm not doing justice to the story, but I, I'll probably get Janice online um, one of these days and have her give you her own testimony. Uh, Brother Joel was just telling me different things, like like before Donald went into into this um, this place that he's been cared for now, he fell from the top of the stairs to the bottom um, in the basement um, and hit his head, and there was not a swelling, there was not a bruise on his head, and he said that was only a miracle, it's, it's an impossibility that something like that could have happened, and um, and he was not, you know. Um, more hurt than he was. Anyway, I'm just saying to you, brothers and sisters, that there is power in, in, in confirmations and affirmations and knowing who you are and what you have. And don't be afraid to speak and to speak loud. I am a child of God and no power of the enemy can touch me. I mean, you don't be afraid. You stand on the word of God and watch and see what happens. All right. Anyway, the sermon is over. It's, it's time for lunch. So thank you so much for your time and company.